All right, it is uh, Thursday, June 29th. The time is uh, 1420 New York local time. This is a video recording of my day trading the Micro Russell. Um, I blew out my daily loss limit on top step, blew out my Apex account. Well, Apex was by accident. Um, from this point forward, I'm not going to try and tr uh, trade uh, two prop firm accounts at once. It's too much. Uh, it divides my attention too much. Um, so I will be sticking with Top Step, Top Step Trader Funding, or yeah, Top Step, Top Step, Top Step Trader, as I am. Uh, I have been previously funded on Top Step Trader for day trading. Um, I will be sticking with Top Step Trader Funding, as I cannot. Um, I cannot afford another Apex account, number one. And then number two, uh, I cannot divide, afford to divide my attention between Top Step and Apex, switching between, just using one laptop, switching between the two browser windows uh, distracts my attention too much. And so with that being said, I cannot afford to trade two accounts at once. So whether this recording goes up on YouTube or not, I don't know yet. Uh, we're sitting here trading the Micro Russell on my personal account. Okay, just waiting to see how the market develops. We have buy side liquidity sitting up above 1902.2. That should be a draw on liquidity. Um, we swung down here and came into this uh, bullish order block, also below this uh, long wick inefficiency. Um, I've generally, so the mistakes in my trading uh, that I believe that I have been making is number one uh, I believe that I consistently try and aim for for unreasonable or too far profit targets in these current market conditions which have been pretty slow this week uh, coming into a holiday week next week the week of July 4th there will be holiday shortened hours trading hours on both the fourth the third and the fourth so shortened week next week I would expect a period of decreased volatility during that time uh, I will be trading my top step trader uh, t step two at that point. So probably going to be on my top step trader focusing mostly on the NASDAQ as the NASDAQ uh, has you know over time shown the most movement. Although the Russell 2000 also sometimes has pretty decent moves. Um, last night I attempted to trade uh, gold uh, during the electronic hours um, over leveraged and allowed the the over leverage is not what wasn't really over leverage it just allowed the position to run too far against me and hit my daily loss limit and so uh, two ways of risk management the first is tighter stop losses the second is uh, lower leverage so you can let the position move further as with anything in day trading it's a balancing act you can choose to use top st tight stop losses or you can choose to use wide stop losses with a bigger a bigger contract size um, I have been trying to enter in on limit orders for the most part although that hasn't seemed to be more doesn't seem to be more mathematically efficient to do that so I'm not convinced uh, at this point that entering in on limit orders has been optimal uh, letting the market develop I want to see the inefficiencies. Another thing that I think that I've been making mistake on is 
I'm watching for pending inefficiencies in the market, but not as much looking for the inefficiencies as they are created. So, you know, trying to always enter in on an inefficiency is not always an option because these swings are, you know, fairly small. And so it just takes an immense amount of timing, immense amount of patience, uh, getting a feeling for what the market is doing. Um, and if you see that an inefficiency is formed and it doesn't look like price is going to come back to it, you might have to enter in at the market. It's the only way that you can actually catch a swing. So we are trying to catch swings here. Um, if we leave this inefficiency open, I'll probably go short. Came up to a SIBI here, rejected it, uh, closed here. This is looking like a short opportunity down to the first order block here. Probably would just take it off at the top high. So following these swings as they happen, letting the market develop is a big mistake that I think that I've been making is just not letting the market develop. I have a video on it. It doesn't mean that I'm there myself. As many of you know, just because I make a video on something doesn't mean that I myself am this ultra disciplined, ultra whatever you think I am, I'm not. Still getting disciplined, undisciplined, uh, you know. So in terms of my the technical mistakes that I'm thinking that I'm, I'm making in my trading, a couple of things. Number one, unreasonable unreasonable targets. I'm not trying to aim for the low hanging fruit like Michael teaches. Uh, I should be, you know, aiming for the first target, especially when I can only trade one contract. Got to try and take profitable trades, really can't afford a lot of losses. So with that being said, um, you got you to gotta try and aim for the first profit target. And sometimes you're going to miss a big runner. It's kind of something that you have to accept. So, number, so that's that's the first thing is is my exits are very suboptimal. Not letting my profit targets, not not placing profit targets that are a high likelihood of actually being filled. So, that's one thing that I think that I'm making a mistake on. Number two, uh, I think that I'm not allowing the marketplace to develop enough. Enough. I'm early on most of my trades. Uh, so letting the market develop, waiting another minute, two minutes, whatever it is, day trading time frames before executing another trade. So we've talked about patience measured in day trading time intervals, which is allowing the market to develop before you enter another trade. Sometimes it might be more development. Sometimes it might not give you much time to let it develop at all. So that is all variable as well. That's another variability here in day trading. Uh, you don't know exactly how long the market's going to sit there before it does make a swing. Um, so that's another thing. I also think I've probably been too rigid trying to enter in only on limit orders. That rigidity probably needs to go away. Sometimes it's going to be a limit. Sometimes it's going to be a market. Difficult to say. Other than that, I do think that over time, my ability to analyze uh, microstructure, quote unquote, um, day trade using small inefficiencies, I think uh, I've generally improved at that. I do let my stop losses, stop losses uh, ha have not been optimal. So my stop losses have been suboptimal. My take profits have been suboptimal. Not letting the market develop enough before executing a trade has been suboptimal. And then rigidly trying only to enter in on Mark uh, only enter in on limit orders has also been suboptimal. Okay, looks like we are going to invert this Bissy, uh, Sibby here, Sibby and Bissy. Looks like we are going to invert that. I'm probably looking at a long now. I'm just going to let it develop for another 10 seconds or so before we execute on that idea. Don't know whether I'm going to put this up on YouTube or not. This could just be for my own development. Okay. This inefficiency looks like it did invert and we are going higher. I would have to hasten to guess that we are probably looking at higher, but I don't want to say that just yet. So we have a SIBI here that we came up into, highlighting that with the cursor. Don't have enough time to draw these all out into boxes. We are in a SIBI and a BISI on the other side. That is a, a little bit of a balanced price range there. So that should have some resistance here on price. I'm not going to execute until I feel confident about it. Right at this second, I do not feel confident about it. 
So these are kind of my own training manual. I don't know whether I'll upload it to YouTube to let you watch or not. It's a hard profession, folks. I don't know what to tell you it is. I know that myself now. It's a difficult profession. Can be done. It's difficult. Market conditions change. Sometimes they're more volatile. Sometimes they're less volatile. As a day trader, we like to see volatility. It's not always going to give that to you, though. So you can see NASDAQ has generally been trading efficiently today. Some definitely tradable swings, though. Breakaway inefficiency there was tradable. Okay, waiting to see something in the micro Russell before I execute on my TradeStation account again. Waiting to see something. Currently working in this little volume imbalance that we formed on this one minute chart. Got an hour and a hour and a half, hour and twenty nine minutes left of the time in which I can trade, and then it'll be back to top step trader uh, this afternoon and this evening. So. This is sort of my own training manual. There is no training manual. I'm not working for a company. I'm independently contracting, doing this myself. So uh, I have to make these video journals on my own, treat it like a profession, as though, as though I had a boss, which I don't. Uh, but if, if uh, a boss or risk manager or whatever at a prop firm were watching me, these would be the video recordings that, uh, you know, if he wanted to see what I'm thinking, that would be this would be the video for that so this is going forward what I have to do to improve in my own day trading is make these video recordings uh, watching my own session we're gonna be on a, a regular trading hours here we're in regular trading hours wanna flip on regular trading hours came up into this buy side inefficiency looks like we are gonna reject that uh, I'm gonna try a short and aim for aim for our first top of the order block here right there that's what we're gonna aim for uh, let that develop for a few minutes does look like it is gonna reject yellow box yellow box is a buy side inefficiency it does look like we're gonna reject that come back down to this order block down here this is the lowest hanging fruit target it is the first target of this trade second target would be the second liquidity pool as I can only afford to trade one contract, I cannot afford to make it to second targets. I can only afford to make it to first targets. So before executing on this trade, I let one, two, three, four or five rejections come in the marketplace. Four or five minutes of market development gives me an idea that, that this should reject. And that is letting the marketplace develop before executing on a trade. So, I've tried to here recently always be at that literal top tick. Uh, it's virtually impossible as much as I want to be there. So, sometimes it's going to be a limit order, sometimes it's going to be a market order. If I'm letting the marketplace develop before entering, it's probably often going to be a market order. And accepting the slippage is not something that I want to do. I would prefer to enter in on a limit and not have any slippage. But that being said, market conditions change quickly. And the only way you can keep up with it sometimes is entering in at the market. Not something that I like to do, but it is what it is. Okay. I'm looking for 2.2 points lower, two spot two points lower. That is our first couple of black candles down here. We are sell side inefficient all the way down. Entered in short here as I saw that this buy side inefficiency looked to be rejecting. And these are sort of my own trading manuals. So in the future when I'm trading my top step trader uh, and I'm in a trading session, I'll probably just record the hours and hours of me trading. Probably going to be long recordings. Lots of music on the headphones. Lots of time spent listening to music and other stuff. 
Okay. Uh, I thought we were rejecting this buy side inefficiency. Looks like it does not want to reject it, so come back down. And this is probably going to be a loss. I cannot afford to move stop losses. Don't have the money for it. So if the stop gets hit, the stop gets hit. Came down, formed a little one minute balance price range. Um, I don't like to see that, so we are. Eh, 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 eh. Yeah, I did think it was going to reject this buy side inefficiency. It does not look like it wants to do that. does not look like it wants to reject the buy side inefficiency. Okay. Uh, Going to invert that buy side inefficiency now and come up to our first, our next point of interest. Next point of interest is order block. Right there. That's the next point of interest. We're also in a SIBI right here. Let's see if that rejects. This SIBI rejects. Gonna give it a minute or two, see if it wants to reject the SIBI. Also have a volume imbalance here that could invert. So looking to see if this yellow box rejects. And if so, we'll try a short again. Okay. Want to see if it rejects in the side of this yellow box. Going to let it develop for a minute. Initial rejection off the 50%. So that's our very initial rejection. Now I want to see if we get any sort of displacement lower. Coming into the last hour and 20 minutes of trading. Um, Probably going to try and take another short here. Going to let it play out for another minute, two minutes. Okay. Order block is a point of interest. And then this SIBI that we're in right now is a point of interest. Okay. Looking at our grand scheme of things, haven't really moved a lot on the Russell today. Probably going to get one more good movement to break some highs or lows in the last hour of trading. Okay. Another tick lower into this volume imbalance here. And I'm going to say that yellow box might have reject, been a point of rejection. And we are going to try another short. That's why you got to you got to sometimes just enter in at the market. I don't have to tell you. Dom's too slow. Limits order is too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Too slow. Can't keep up. Coming into this little buy side and sell side inefficiency right here. Uh, if we get a reaction here, that might be a long. Still thinking about that buy side liquidity up above 1902 spot two. Thinking about it. It has not wanted to get up there uh, after its numerous attempts. So, okay, we're coming into a uh, sell side inefficiency here. Let's see if we get a reaction. If we do get a reaction, it could be a long. Okay, I am going to uh, take a short and target the same spot that I did before. Accepting that we might get some retracement. Stop is going to be just above the yellow box. Okay, aiming for this first order block here. 
Yeah, the limit orders can just be too slow. The limit orders can be too slow. Unfortunately, you don't know when they're going to be too slow and when they're not going to be too slow. In other words, you don't know when the market is going to give you some sort of a pullback and when it is not. And so sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. So the most flexible order type is the market order. Okay, we're reacting off this BISI. Don't like to see that. Don't want to see much more of a reaction. Otherwise, this is going to be pulled. Okay, good tick down. We'll come down to that first order block. Reaction off this green candle's high. Got a reaction there. Aiming for these top of these two black candles. Volume imbalance is also here. Yeah, just trying to execute with limit orders. Uh, it just doesn't work. Empirically, it's empirically proven to me. All right, we're going to pull that. That's a profit minus commissions. Okay. Did get a reaction off the first green candle coming into these two black candles. Going to let the market develop again before we trade. Uh, buy side inefficiency here. Sorry, sell side inefficiency. We are getting a reaction. We are getting a reaction off this sell side inefficiency here. Uh, we also have one lower. It's a little bit of a balanced price range here. Things are happening all the time. So, All right, we're probably, probably coming back up to the order flow that we just made. Uh, grand scheme of things, I guess it does not want to take out the buy side. Is a little bit too fast for me to want to reverse right into a long. Watching the yellow box. Blue box. Watching the yellow box higher. Come up into these gaps. Might be another short. Volume imbalance here, gap here. Got a gap at night, 1897 spot five. Okay. Coming back down, if we come back down and reclaim this BISI, see if we get uh, reaction off that. Shot lower here on the SIBI, right here. Shot lower on that SIBI, 1898 spot one. Shot lower on that. It's all just numbers, folks. Markets aren't real, they're just numbers. Just numbers, lots of numbers. Calculations, algorithms, that's all they are. Yeah, you really can't afford limit orders always. Sometimes you just need to get in the marketplace and you'll have to take the slippage and maybe take a retracement against you, take some drawdown against you. Um, gap up here, 1897 spot 4. Want to see a reaction there. Volume imbalance lower, 1895 spot 1. Working in between yellow box and blue box. Yeah, the limit orders are just sometimes too slow. And I've probably been too rigid trying to apply the limit order. So probably another mistake to chop up on the book. Uh, limit orders can be too slow. So my stop losses are generally suboptimal. Sometimes they're too wide, sometimes they're too tight. My entries have been suboptimal as I've been trying to too rigidly apply entering in on limit orders. Doesn't mean I always want to enter in on a market order, but I think I've been too rigidly applying, trying to avoid slippage and trying to avoid immediate pullbacks. 
can't be done. Sometimes you need the market order because it's faster. It's faster. Um, and then my take profits have been suboptimal as they have been um, generally generally I'm trying to aim for too much so that has been that I think those are the suboptimal things that I can work on in my day trading market conditions have changed they are not moving as much as they did last week the volatility has decreased and I'm expecting the volatility to decrease on our indices next week as well bonds have had quite a good movement today though Virtually cannot trade this on a one-minute chart. Yeah, it's pretty much you'd have to be up at a three-minute or four-minute before I could see structure and inefficiencies here. So, like three-minute minimum to trade the bonds. NASDAQ obviously can be traded even down to a second chart. Okay. Michael Russell, we're back on it. Probably going to focus my career on indices trading for the most part. I don't really particularly care which one, but uh, probably just going to focus on indices trading. Again, you're probably thinking to yourself, if, if I put this up on YouTube, uh, do I mean that do I mean that I'm going to only trade one in one of these stock indices? And the answer is no. But I might stick mostly to stock indices. Although crude oil, oh, I, I got rid of my CL. That's a problem. Got rid of the CL. That's, yeah, you can see the CL can be traded on the one minute chart as well. It's got enough structure to work with on the one minute chart. Two minute chart is viable on the CL as well. So, you know, CL is another option. Let's go back to our M2K. One hour, ten minutes left that I can trade. And then we'll be back on our Top Step Trader for another training session uh, tonight. So I do have to take uh, breaks and all that stuff. But th I consider these all training sessions. Working up to professional day trading. It's the job that I want to do. So if I were working for a company already, and for whatever reason, the company wanted to see my trading, see my, see my company wanted to see what I'm looking for, company wanted to see what my facial expressions are during the trading and blah, 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 all that stuff, all that bullshit, then these are the kind of trading videos that I would show to, I would show to an employer. And they're real. And this is really what I want to do with my life. Um, okay, uh, current thoughts, just gonna narrate the current thoughts, working up into this bearish order block here, working up into some structure, working up into the midway point, halfway point of this uh, SIBI. What is a SIBI? Long black candle, no wicks back into it. It is a inefficiently delivered price. There are commonplace, there are many. There are many, many inefficiencies on the one minute micro Russell. There are many inefficiencies on the one minute NASDAQ. Virtually cannot read this price action on the bonds, but they are there as well. Gold, one minute inefficiencies are all over the place as well. Could even get down into a tick chart or a second chart and see the inefficiencies. I'm looking for inefficiencies in the marketplace in price delivery where I believe that trading algorithms have suboptimally or inefficiently delivered price and then seeing how they react off of how price reacts off of said inefficiently delivered price. This is probably short. This is a short. Okay. And what are we aiming for? Lowest hanging fruit is our rejection bot. Okay, we are displacing lower. Stop loss is going to go right here. Okay, aiming for the nearest low hanging fruit, which is our first rejection block.
Although this thing might want to just immediately bounce off. We do have a volume imbalance here. So actually the stop loss is going to go there. I don't really want to see this get there. Am I training with a couple hundred dollars? Yep. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Okay. We are volume balance right here. Don't really want to see a, a, a reaction off that. Just want it to punch through. Allow it to trade back up here. No higher. Because this thing could, yeah, you know, what it's doing right now, it's considering whether it wants to react here off this volume imbalance and then go higher. Could still get a bearish reaction, down reaction right here. 1895 spot 9. Could get a, a down fluctuation from that. So, see we got order that came in the marketplace caused some displacement. Lower. Bit of a one tick fair value gap right there. One tick SIBI is at 1895 spot 9. Aiming for the open of this green candle back down into our blue box. Okay, volume imbalance. Let's see if it reacts right here. Could get a reaction here at 1895 spot 1. If it does, I'll probably reverse this position. 1895 spot one, reaction. Okay, this is about to be a reversal. Don't want to be in the habit of reversing, but I'm seeing that this volume imbalance here, it did get a reaction. Little one tick inefficiency right there. Got an initial reaction. So after the initial reaction, it's it's then a question of if we're going to push through it. If price is to go down, first target is where my order is. Second target's down here at 1891 spot 9, and that is if the market wants to turn lower. I have reason to believe the market, you know, could turn lower. As we are, we we are sell side inefficient down into the 1880s. But we do have buy side liquidity as well. One hour left of trading. Now it's sitting there deciding what it wants to do with its life. Okay, tick lower. Our next mark to market was lower. 1895 spot three was our next mark to market. Just formed a an inefficiency there. Inefficiently delivered price. Tick back up into it. It's a back tick. Back tick right there. Back tick back up into it. So we have an inefficiently delivered price. 1895 spot four. I'm looking for our nearest target. Five big dollars. Okay, trading back into that one tick inefficiency we just had. Now trading through it. Would allow it to come up to 1895 spot 9. Coming up on the top of the hour. Okay, at this point, we did react off that volume imbalance. All right, this is now along. 
stop loss is going to go below that volume imbalance. Nearest target, reasonable target, reasonable target here. I'm going to say this volume imbalance right there. I don't, I don't, I don't like reversing like that, but the price action that we just formed right there shows me that it reacted immediately off of our inefficiency right here. Working in this little inefficiently delivered price, 1895 spot 8. I'm looking for this inefficiently delivered price inefficiency up at 1897 spot 6. So I'm going to move up the blue box to right there. It's going to be a small blue box. Right there. Did get a reaction off blue box, off this volume imbalance. It's tend to make me believe that uh, this is looking up. I did think we were. I'm seeing both sides of the marketplace at the moment. But... So I thought we might come back down to our rejection block here. We did not. We did not. Just came down to re-deliver this volume balance here. Re-deliver 1895 spot 2. Same, working up in the same inefficiency. I think it's coming back up to yellow box. I think we found support here on blue box, going up to yellow box. And my take profit is short of the yellow box. Reversing like this in and of itself is not inherently a mistake. Like with anything in day trading, it's a balancing act because if you're working within a range, you're going to have reason to see both sides of the marketplace. And that is how it is. So sometimes, you know, for example, I did see that we were going to shoot lower. I thought we were going to shoot to this swing point. We have not done that. We failed to do that. So I'm not reversing out of revenge. Reversing because I saw they were building up a little bit of, of price action here, and we came down into this volume imbalance and found support. That being said, if I'm again proven wrong, then we'll you know, let the market develop for another few minutes. Okay, we're at the top of the hour, we're at the top of the last hour of trading, regular trading hours, cash session, one hour left. Then after that, it'll be NASDAQ tonight on my top step trader. I will record my sessions there, go a couple hours at a time. Trading a one minute NASDAQ chart, <clears throat> looking for inefficiencies in the marketplace and liquidity. Just because you know the framework doesn't make it easy. Doesn't make it easy at all. Okay, you see we came down to blue boxes, volume imbalance, we found support. We're now breaking above our short term structure, short term high. Breaking above that, we're trading above. We are buy side inefficient all the way up to the yellow box. Uh, I am taking my profit short of the yellow box. I actually want to start, you know, taking reasonable take profits. The earliest or the closest reasonable take profit. 
and in this instance that would be 1897 spot 6. Okay, just formed some inefficiencies on our way up, a uh, gap and a long wick inefficiency, so inefficiently delivered price. Inefficiencies work in different ways. They are a draw on liquidity, uh, but they are also they can also repel. If you get a strong move in one direction, it's going to form many inefficiencies on the way. Get a strong move. So if you're looking to enter in on a strong move, I call them breakaway inefficiencies. Michael calls them that. Also measuring gaps. I kind of take all my inefficiencies and just kind of clump them all into one category. I mean, not exactly. I know the distinctions, but kind of all work the same way. They're draws on liquidity. They are draws on liquidity, and they are support and resistance, dynamic support and resistance. So they can invert. So I expect that if we redeliver 1896.4, spot four, we'll probably get a reaction off that. Probably getting a reaction off of this 96.4. Yeah, we do. Okay, initial reaction. Let's see if we trade through the initial reaction. Well, okay, another reaction, second reaction. Back tick. Let's see if we get a third reaction on it. Coming into... Okay, that was uh, three reactions off that one minute level. You would see three separate candles if you were down on like a 15 second chart. You would see three separate candles that came down to that 1896 spot 4 so that was multiple reactions off that price coming back to it again fourth time another reaction Let's see if we get another reaction yep fifth reaction Let's see if we get a sixth reaction off of it or if we trade through it. Okay, reacting off 1896.4 again. Very patiently telling you what's happening in the marketplace. Another reaction off 1896.4. Reacted off that same price seven times. Let's see if we can finally trade up and through. Last 55 minutes of trading. Everything's pretty slow right now. I'm not seeing on the right side of my chart. I'm not seeing a, a lot of, I'm not seeing a lot of uh, ticks. Okay. You see, we reacted multiple times off that 1896.4. Now should be trading through that. If you were down on a five-second chart, that price level at 1896.4, you would see that like on a five second chart it came down to it seven times and so that would be a reclaimed gap seven times so these inefficiencies can act as support multiple times and when they act as support multiple times they become reclaimed reclaimed meaning traded more than once in that instance that 1896.4 inefficiency was traded to seven times And the, the point of this trading right here is not really to make any money because I can't. The point is to train. So when I'm on my top step trader, I want to hit my daily profit limit. Get funded. Get a paycheck. The whole name of the game. Okay, at this point, um, I'm going to put my support just below. Uh, I, I don't want to pay my broker commissions, but... 
Uh, I don't want to see it come back down below that 1896.4. So I'm going to put it at a scratch now. Really want to see some movement now, get some displacement. Got 54 minutes left of trading. Fifty four minutes left of trading coming up. I'm five ticks away from what I want. Four ticks. Yeah, I've been trying to trade an apex and a and a top step at the same time and uh cannot well, it probably can be done, but I can't do it. Not reasonably. Not not consistently not trading well okay came up to this volume imbalance turn lower I don't like it at this point I'm gonna pull that at this point I'm waiting okay got enough money to keep trading not by much. I I didn't like to see that we came back down to, you know, we were respecting this green box. Was that a little bit of an early exit? Yeah, probably, probably, almost certainly that was an early exit. Came back down to eighteen ninety six bought four an eighth time, and now we're getting that displacement higher. Might be a long again. I don't know. Invert this invert this volume imbalance here. Okay. I am uh, gonna attempt another long. And the stop loss is gonna go just below that green candle there. Uh, in terms of a reasonable take profit, I'm going to aim for that order block right there. Trade through the yellow box. I want to see it trade through the yellow box straight up into... Alright, we'll do one tick higher. One tick higher. So, invert the green box go through the yellow box up into this order block here. That's my current thinking. You see it's re-delivering inefficient. So we had these inefficiently delivered prices on the way down that we are now uh, coming back through. And it's working, ironing out these inefficiencies what it's doing. Iron them out. Delivering a fair price. Okay, coming back. Tick lower into... I want to see this green box invert. Act as support. Go higher. Fifty minutes. I like to say just punch through this gap. Hmm. I might have been hasty. But I I want to see the green box invert. I want to see it act as support. Inefficiencies can be dynamic support resistance, so it can trade through it, trade back to it, invert.
I consider my real cash account now, my real trading, to be top step. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, we came right back down. <laughs> this just yet uh, if we get stopped out I'm gonna wait a minute let it develop a little bit let it develop coming back down to that 96 spot four that we've found support on multiple times probably gonna trade through it now probably looking at a uh, loss here I wanted to see this green box act as an immediate inversion to go higher. You know, ultimately what I'm seeing here on the 10 minute chart is a lot of buy side liquidity up above 1902 spot one. Kind of be my sort of end of day, end of day target, just buy side liquidity up here. My current thinking that the draw on liquidity is up above 1902 spot two. Uh, if that is accurate, at this point, price should be moving in that direction, if that makes sense. If we are, see here on the 10 minute chart, if we are gonna draw all the way up to 1902 spot two, break this high, knock out the short stops, the buy stops, then, you know, price doesn't have, it's only got 45 minutes left. So if price is, wants to do that, going to take out this liquidity, it needs to do that soon. So, if my thesis is correct and we are going to draw to buy side liquidity, it would need to do that very soon. Let's work on that green box. Work at ironing out that inefficiency. Let's trade in and around and all around it to re-deliver this in inefficiently delivered price. That's what it's doing. It's re-delivering this green box. Inefficiently delivered price. It is working in up and all. You can see it's just working all through that in order to iron that inefficiency out. Now we're coming up on 45 minutes left of trading. Uh, at the 15 minute mark here, we should start to see a pickup in volatility in either direction. Okay, 10 seconds. Should be seeing a pickup in volatility. At this point, Michael Huddleston teaches that the market on close macro should be in effect. Market on close macro, concept of that is that between 1515 New York local time and 1545 New York local time, a short set of instructions will hit the marketplace to go and seek the nearest liquidity, to go and seek out the nearest liquidity. That at this point would be higher. That would be right about where my order is at this point, one minute chart. So using Michael's framework there, we should be uh, moving up to our nearest liquidity. if. If his theories about the algorithm are correct, that is what it should be doing. Between 1515 and 1545, it should seek liquidity. So, there's that. 
uh, working in the green box here. It's ironed out that inefficiency now and uh, should have the leeway to move higher at some point here. Nearest liquidity, definitely higher. But that being said, we do have liquidity lower that it might want to go target instead. Okay, we are getting a displacement lower and we are stopped out Okay, just gonna let it develop for another. All right, at this point I think we're gonna come take this low. Plenty of time to work up here. It's ironed out that inefficiency. So I'm gonna aim for the nearest low. Try and get a win on the books. Gonna put this one, one, two ticks above the nearest high. Want to see this now? Come target the nearest low. Now that we've ironed out these inefficiencies up here, I believe that price doesn't really have a go doesn't now if it's done that then it doesn't really have a reason to go back up there um, other than our liquidity higher at 1902 spot too but that might come at the very end of the day right now I'm looking at uh, the next 30 minutes and that would be I'm gonna remove the the blue box I'm looking at our nearest low So as you can see, it reached my targets both times without me, and that is suboptimal stop placement. So, suboptimal stop placement. So I'm going to say optimal stop placement here is going to be one tick above this high. Not the nearest high that we just made because it could come up through that. So one tick above that high. That should be optimal stop placement. Okay, optimal exit. Instead of that low, I'll, I'll do one tick above. Do one tick above that low. And that that should be filled. Looking for optimal trading. And so optimal stops, optimal exits. Instead of saying this low will be taken, I'll just put, just put a one tick, just one tick above. Sacrifice one tick for a much higher probability. This high should be protected now. Protected by this green box price action. This low is looking vulnerable. So, market's going to be drawn to liquidity. Uh, that would be below this low, 1894 spot one. It is there. So we're going to have uh, sell stops down here, sell side liquidity. I'm not even aiming for the liquidity pool. Just aiming for one tick above the low. I believe that should be filled. Could just punch right through it, go lower. I don't know. Because I don't know, I need to be conservative, be, be optimal with the take profit because I don't know if it's going to want to punch into this liquidity. It should. It should want to do that, and I should be filled on the take profit just right on the way. And it's a good feeling when your take profit just is right on the way. Surprised got no problem getting there, just right on the way. It's on the path. That's kind of the best feeling. Price is not struggling to get to your take profit. It's just cuts cuts right to it. 
which it doesn't want to do for me. This low? No way. This low? That was it? That's what you were seeking? That one? Ay, 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 ay. Okay. We're looking at a retracement now. Oh, tough, very tough. Michael talks about the market being in a mode like this where it's just seeking liquidity. And because I have to trade, got to try and make it happen. It's a market condition I have to be familiar with. Just seeking liquidity, just bouncing around, just kind of hunting, hunting that liquidity. It's a difficult market condition. It's not giving you clear indications of what it wants to do. Just seeking that liquidity up and down, up and down, seeking liquidity. Up, down, up, and down, rage all around. From liquidity to liquidity. Okay. Feeling pretty good about this one's going to be hit. A couple weeks ago, the Micro Russell went up about 4% in a day. It was very clean price action, very uh, one-sided. That was uh, very clear what it was drawing to. It was very apparent. So those market conditions were kind of on easy mode. These market conditions are kind of on hard mode ranges the volatility has kind of died down the ranges are smaller it doesn't like to punch into the liquidity pools as much as it did prior so catching it from swing to swing catching the lower volatility uh, is more difficult doable but more difficult I wouldn't bet on this thing breaking anything right now. Doesn't really appear like it wants to break anything. Not right this second. Alright, we've got a little bit of order flow that we just formed. A little bit of structure we just formed. Aye, aye, aye. Strike rate has been low. With this decreased volatility, even when I think that I'm getting profit targets that are reasonable, got to optimize. Saying what is optimal in these conditions is just tough. Very tough. Um... Very tough. Where my stop losses should be protected. Lots of order flow sitting between my order and the stop loss. Not easy to trading today. A couple weeks ago, last week, the conditions were much easier.
Okay, coming back up to green box, coming into this Sibby. I'm going to leave my stop loss in place. Uh, be patient with it. If it wants to go lower, my stop should be uh, optimal. I don't want to put it above the, the nearest internal liquidity. just want to put it right into external liquidity. Back up to green box. Ah, yeah, yeah. Just very tough. Very tough. Catching these one minute ranges. Very tough. Doable. Tough. Okay, up to green box reaction. Don't want to pull my. This is not enough to convince me the trade is invalid. This is not enough to convince me the trade is invalid. Back up into green box, one minute Sibby. Could get a reaction there lower. Deep retracement. Still think this swing is poised to go lower. Uh, and then what we're looking at right now is a deep retracement. Green box. Sibby. Midpoint of the Sibby, just touch that. Reaction. Reaction off that. Okay, up into volume imbalance, gap, up into the order block. Let's see if we get a reaction there. Last 30 minutes of trading. Top step trader will come tonight. Come later, take a break, go for a walk, and work on my top step. Be trading the NASDAQ tonight. Might upload a training session, training video. Okay, up into this city, up into the green box. I believe that it should find resistance here and turn. I believe it should turn here. Why is my take profit there? It's one take above that swing low, just in case it wants not to break that low. That being said, keeping up with the market conditions here. If the order flow comes in and it makes it seem like it's going to punch through the low, might move this might move the take profit. Stop loss is not above internal liquidity, so internal liquidity would be our immediate swing that we just had from here. Uh, 1897 spot seven to 1894 spot eight. That would be in that would be an internal high. It could it could punch above that internal high and then turn lower. Stop loss is instead above external. If if it goes above external, then um, it's definitely invalid. So just put up the stop above external. When uh, the market comes up into a new high and then turns immediately lower, that is called a turtle soup or a fake breakout. I just call it a turtle soup. That's what Michael teaches. Green box reaction off that Sibby. If you're trading in market conditions like this, you're working in a five point range, you gotta optimize. It's very difficult to optimize. Can be done. Difficult. Okay. Probably going to just be looking at trading top step then, huh? Oh well. That's okay. It is what it is. Deep retracement. 
This doesn't look like a swing terminus to me. Coming up into a bearish order block. Coming into internal range liquidity. Coming up to my stop loss. Coming up, yep, internal range liquidity right there. Just paired the high internal. Hit the C, of the wick. Okay, internal range liquidity is hit. We're back up at yellow box. And I will be stopped out shortly if we get above external. I don't like this margin of error. Would prefer to keep the stop tighter, but it is what it is. Okay, yellow box. A couple ticks above external there. Get an immediate reaction off of our internal. That would be a turtle soup if we come back down. I don't know. Do not know. Just describing the market to you as it happens. All I can do. 28 minutes left. Market's very slow today. We're up in internal range liquidity. We're looking at a reaction, at least, off of that. And if it comes all the way back down, that would be a turtle soup. I put my stop up into internal, excuse me, external range liquidity. Which is a good stop placement, optimal stop placement. We breach my stop and we're going higher. Okay, check out our two minute chart. Back to the one minute chart. Nothing really to see on the two minute. This little range here that I'm working within, that is above that high would have been internal range liquidity. The next high is external. That is why I put my stop where I did at 1898.3 as that is external range liquidity. And if we are breaking into external range liquidity, then uh, we're going higher. So, what is an optimal stop? Let's talk about what an optimal stop is. An optimal stop loss is a stop loss at exactly the point at which your trade idea is proven invalid. Put it simply. It is, it is at the point where the probability of your trading idea being correct is significantly lower. Uh, that is where the stop loss is. It's at that point where your idea is no longer valid, meaning that the probability of success goes below your risk reward and all that stuff. Just math. That is where your stop should be. My idea here was that we displaced lower and should be targeting liquidity. There's going to be liquidity below this low at 1894 spot one. My take profit is one tick above that. One tick above this low as if price comes and seeks this sell side liquidity, it should just punch right through my take profit. So some thoughts on some, some thoughts on that. So I will be on top step tonight. 
We were trying to get funded with Top Step again. We're working on discipline, we're working on self-control, working on optimizing our... My entries are pretty fucking good usually. This one is pretty horrid. I'm feeling, you know, generally okay with my entries. This entry was terrible. Uh, entries are usually okay, they can be optimized. My stop losses are not optimal. Take profits have definitely not been optimal, as I have not... I've really not hit nearly enough of my take profits. I'm usually usually just closing out my positions manually rather than picking a good take profit. And so that means that my take profits are suboptimal. That's what that means. My take profits have been suboptimal. An optimal stop loss is at the point in which your trade idea is the not one tick above and not one tick below. It should be exactly where the probability of your trade succeeding turns from, uh, you know, let's say whatever percentage you need. For me, I would I need about 70% of my trades to work. So at the point at which my stop loss, you know, the stop loss is where your trade idea is no longer valid. The idea of the market coming back and filling your take profit is for me, it would be less than 70%, but that's the point. It's an invalidation point. And it should not be tighter than that, and it should not be looser than that. It should be exactly there. That is an optimal stop loss. Optimal entry. The entries are not as important, but lots of entry patterns out there. Can enter in on an inefficiency, that's what I like to do. 20 minutes left of trading. This will probably be the last trade. Whether it's a win or loss. I will probably upload this to YouTube. It's not profitable trading, hasn't been today, but you get to hear me ramble on about uh, things. I know that if I were running a trading company, I wanted to see my employees and my employees' thoughts. These are the kind of videos that I, if I were running a trading company, I would want to watch these kind of recordings, live trading, live thoughts, to see if my employees are thinking reasonably about the market. So I'm really just making a video that if I were running a trading company, I would want my employees to make these kind of videos so we can optimize the trading. Again, my stop losses have not been optimal because sometimes they're too tight and sometimes they're too loose. It's a balance. It's a, it's a yin and yang. It's a balancing act. It's exactly at the point where your trade idea is invalid. A lot of times that might be external range liquidity like this. External range liquidity is a good point at which, you know, if price trades up into external, your idea is probably almost certainly wrong. External is a good idea. It's not always external though, but a lot of times it is gonna be external. My take profits have been suboptimal, especially in a lower volatility environment. As I've generally put my take profits in, you know, in the liquidity pools or below them. And as we can see, lots of failure swings today, lots of failure to actually break into liquidity pools. We've had a couple, you know, good sized movements into liquidity. But for the most part, we can see that the Russell here has, has really operated within a defined range, not wanting to break out into the liquidity. And the only way that you can trade that is with take profits that are not in the liquidity but shy of the liquidity. What is the liquidity? It's stop orders. And usually the market uh, wants to punch through those. In a volatile marketplace, you will see that price will 
breach these highs and lows often. Uh, when when the trading algorithms, when the powers that be want to get a get a you know leave build up the liquidity in the book. So essentially, right? I'll tell you. The longer that you see, okay. This is kind of. I'll remove yellow box. The longer that you see that the liquidity is left in the book, the more it's building up on both sides. Okay. So they'll, you know, if the trading algorithms are, feel like there's not a lot of liquidity in the marketplace, they want to build it up for whatever reason, the market's slow, then what they'll do is they'll just let it build up on both sides. And then once it's built up sufficiently on both sides, they'll clear out both sides of the book. We call that a search and destroy pattern. At this point, at green box and green box, there are pools of liquidity, pools of stops. And the price coming in at the very last 15 minutes of trading, it is likely to seek one of these pools, top green or bottom green. I'm betting on bottom green. Uh, but it will probably break into one of these green boxes. These are our liquidity pools sitting above and below. So, green boxes here are our liquidity pools, and price is going to want to, very end of trading here, it is highly likely to want to go and break into one of these. So it's going to be top step from this point forward. Don't have enough money to trade this. It's going to be top step. That's what I have available to me. So you will be seeing me trade top step trader tonight. Uh, if I get a couple payouts, if I can get to my first payout, get there, break into the money, you'll see me trade more trade station. This is going to be my last trade station trading session for uh, however long it needs to be. So we'll be on the NASDAQ. We'll be on the NASDAQ tonight. You can see the NASDAQ uh, does not want to break into its liquidity either. NASDAQ has mostly failed to break into liquidity today. Last 15 minutes of trading. All right. I know I said I wouldn't do this. I'm going to bet that the Russell is going to break into liquidity. Uh, if we are coming down, then because of the time of day this is, because um, it's the last 15 minutes of the cash session, I'm expecting that it will want to come into break, break liquidity. This would be the right time for it to do that. So I do expect that this low is going to be taken. We're going to be on the NASDAQ on our top step trader tonight. We have work to do, my friends. We've got a lot of work to do. It's probably going to be, a f it's going to be weeks before I get to a payout. I'll tell you that. I think we're going to punch into sell side liquidity at the very end of the day here. Last 15 minutes should get a pickup in volatility. And I just, this will be the last trade.
14 minutes left of trading. I'm expecting one push into liquidity. Should happen pretty fast. All right, it's probably gonna, uh, it's looking like it wants buy side liquidity, which would be against me. All right, that is, Yeah, I can't afford to be reversing these positions, really. This is virtually impossible for me to say which, which one it wants to go to. Virtually impossible. There are pools of liquidity both above and below. And it is almost damn near impossible for me to say which one it wants to go to. But I think in the last 10 minutes, it's going to either one. I think it's probably sell side. I lean that it wants to go to the sell side box. be on top step. Friday. Friday's trading. We'll be on top step. Trying to get funding with top step. And then ultimately the goal of mine coming into uh, a year year out from now is, is fund my own tra trade station account, trade my own money. But I cannot fund myself with no money. So ergo why we need to use top step. Because I'm out of the monies. Got no monies left. Because I have no manner of impulse control and I gone fucked up. No manner of discipline and impulse control. And I had a fundamental misunderstanding of the market. Not that I'm quite there yet either, but I'm a lot closer than I was before I had money. And I blew the money uh, before I knew it was going on. So there go, ergo we have to use top step instead of trade station. Cause I gone fucked up. I gone fucked up. Okay, yeah, we're we're punching into buy side liquidity here. Let's reverse this. We're coming into buy side liquidity. Let's see how far it wants to run in the last ten minutes. I'll just let it run. We're going to punch through this green box and then see how far it wants to run higher. 
only at that point did I know that we were punching green box. Do we see 1902.2 in the last 10 minutes? I, I doubt it. Uh, take profit's going to be one tick shy of that high. 1901 spot six. I doubt it will happen, but all is possible under the sun. Got nine minutes for that. We did punch into that buy side liquidity. Five minute chart. Got seven minutes left. Yeah, this is this is not it. This is not it. Very tough, very tough. Virtually impossible for me to read this correctly today. Wasn't on it. Any gimmick that you think will get you past this, like using, uh, using indicators, you can't change the fundamental market condition if it's not volatile if it's not giving you clear signals neither will your indicators okay you have to work through this there's no other way for me to tell you that you have to work through market conditions like this Can I get three points in five minutes in these conditions? Probably not. Well. Ay, 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 ay. Look at that. Just came, swept it, immediately moved lower. Shouldn't have reversed that. Thought it was attracted, going to be attracted to this buy side up here. I really did. If you're wondering the point at which this trade would be invalid, it is right there.
Yeah. Today was not it. Today was not it. Couldn't handle. Couldn't handle this. This did it to me. I did it to myself, but I yeah. This is this is. I can't handle it. I'm not there yet. This is advanced. These are very advanced conditions in which to operate. And I am not there yet. I think I can get there. But I'm not there yet. Just swept the swept our nearest external. Moved immediately back lower. And it did it you know so quickly that you had almost really no opportunity to uh, trade it. So the only way that you could trade this little swing here would have been a limit order right above external right there, spending that it would turtle soup like that, cover almost immediately. That is very difficult for a human to do. Possible, difficult. Throughout this session, it has remained elusive to me why price would not want this liquidity. As you know, I've said many times that price is more drawn to inefficiency than it is liquidity. So sometimes it's just going to leave that liquidity intact. Maybe come get it tomorrow. Maybe come get it next week. I don't know. The greatest draw on price immediately is not the liquidity. It's the inefficiency. If you learn that, for your immediate trading. Last minute of the cash session. play a tight game here let it run over by a minute or so I don't think they'll close me out automatically in a minute okay I gotta be out of here I gotta be flat in a minute Gotta be flat in 30 seconds. Gonna be flat in 20 seconds. Have to be. Ugh. Pretty disgusting, honestly. Pretty uh, disgusting. Okay, that's going to be it. Bye.